So Thanksgiving is in two days, right? Who didn't know that? We all knew that. You didn't know that? News to you. Are we ready? Are we excited? Yes. What? Are we what? Are we thankful? Are we thankful? Right. So we're going to get to that. What do you think about when you hear Thanksgiving? Food. Food. Vacation. Food. Turkey. I tell you what, on, on Sunday own. when I walked past Johnny Reb's, I thought turkey. They had it all laying out over there. They were cooking them. They were, had them on racks. It was like turkey. What else do we think when it comes to Thanksgiving? Football. Football. Vacation. What about those Falcons last night? Uh, Vacation. Family. Family. What else? Who's, what is your favorite uh, dish? Your food item? Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes stuffing and the deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. With, with, with paprika or without paprika? With the red paprika, with paprika? My favorite holiday food is cranberry sauce. Kind of weird, but I love cranberry sauce. Like in the shape of the can? In the, I can eat it out of the can. Without the berries, just straight up sauce. That's like my favorite ever. Yeah, thank you. Please pray for me. The day after the leftovers? Yeah, turkey The turkey sandwiches. sandwiches. Turkey bread and mayonnaise, that's all you need. So we think about a lot of things with Thanksgiving. We think about the holiday. But for a Christian, for a believer, it goes way, way, way much deeper than that. And you can go out, you can go through the whole Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and you can do a word search on thanks, thankfulness, thanksgiving. All kinds of verses popped up, Old and New Testament. In the Old Testament, we see um, in the book of uh, Leviticus, we see uh, the Jews offering kind of like um, their way of expressing thanksgiving with the different offerings. It's called the peace offering, uh, Leviticus 3 and 7. It's kind of like, hey, thank you, God. Like, you hooked it up. You blessed me. It wasn't like a required offering. It was like, hey, like, I have the right, like, perspective, and I've, I know you've taken care of me. So they go. They offer their offering. And I think that was one of the only offerings where they were allowed to eat from it also is the Thanksgiving offering. And then further down in uh, Psalms, many, many Psalms, um, one psalm, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. And we sing, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And in the New Testament, Paul, Paul's epistles, he's always giving thanks um, to whole churches in his letters. And he even uh, calls out by name certain people that have helped him. And this dude's uh, most of the time in prison and his situations aren't good and he's thanking people, he's writing to people and he names them by name. He's very thankful. But, and we can spend hours and hours studying that stuff, but I wanted to like find a verse that involved being thankful and then also like really, really like applies to us and like what we go through on a daily basis. So not only is thanksgiving or thankfulness um, um, showing gratitude, but it is also uh, an attitude. It's a mindset. So let's pray. And we're going to be in Philippians chapter 4. Father, we thank you so much for thanksgiving. And we know it's much more than food and football, even though those things are fun and good. Um, and we all ultimately want to say thank, thank you to you. And we would want to do this every day of the year and not just in November. So we thank you. We ask and pray over this study that you would bless it um, and speak to us um, and teach us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Let's look at a couple of verses. They're... Uh, they're it, more is involved than just Thanksgiving, but we're going to mainly talk about Thanksgiving. And just a little background, right? Paul is writing an epistle to the Church of Philippi. He's in prison. He's in a bad situation. 
and he's kind of finishing up his letter and he's giving in chapter four like final exhortations and they're they they belong together and then but they're kind of separate um so let's start off in verse six of chapter four paul says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god be anxious for nothing we just kind of talked about this in our in our prayer time right we get stressed we get anxious right we get worried <coughs> don't worry about anything it's it's like okay yeah easier said than done right but when when sometimes when i go through the bible i need to tell myself like okay yeah but then i need to actually do it like not only be a hearer of the hearer of the word but a doer also be anxious for nothing don't worry about anything why do we worry we're human why do we worry not a trick question we're kind of afraid of the outcome we're afraid of the outcome it's something we're not able to control. Right. We're afraid of the future. And and as humans, it's it's kind of like we're we automatically we want to be in control of everything involving our life. Every situation, right? Whether it be a good one, whether it be a bad one, whether it be we're in trouble or we've messed up, we've dropped the ball some way, somehow. We've done it on purpose or we've done it in ignorance or just life happens you know and not only life god puts us in situations where he allows bad things you know to happen you know and we know that the bad things don't come from him right but he allows the bad things god didn't put the bad things on job right he allowed the bad things to be put on job and it was like okay is is Job gonna, how's Job gonna react to all this, right? And that, that guy lost his family, all of his cattle, all of his houses, right? One messenger after another comes running in, you've lost this, you've lost that, you've, you've lost all your kids, right? And, and you're right, it boils down to, to control. And he's saying here, don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about any situation. Don't worry about any circumstance. And it's tough and it's hard. And I like, I want to worry because I can't, I can't control it. And God puts us in situations. He puts us with people. And there's going to be times where it's like, wow, I can't control this at all. And he does that. He wants to build our faith. And, and the Bible's full of those things. I was reading, I believe, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians the other day. And I came across this verse, and it was like, Why does God allow us to suffer? Like, for, your sal for our salvation? And then he says, God comforts us, and he allows us to suffer for our salvation, and not only ours, for others. And I was like, whoa, that's deep. Because it's always like, it's always one-sided. Like, why am I suffering? You know, we always want to be in the comfort area. You know, I want to be always comforted. Why am I suffering? I suffer for my salvation. And it's just like, and for other people? For other people's salvation? Crazy. I think part of it too is not just the, we can't control it. Right. I think a part of the anxiety is that we think if we're not the ones controlling it, exactly, we can't trust the outcome. Right. So that's why we worry. It's like it, 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 it's a trust issue. One, yeah, I have to be the one, right, fixing it or addressing it or dealing with it. And, and if it's not me, then you know, it's kind of like being the passenger in the car, right? Which freaks me out. So it's like I'm not driving. That's an excellent, like, illustration. Like, faith. Are you ready to be passenger in the car that Jesus is driving? Faith. 
completely backwards from what we think, right? We want to be in control. I have a problem, I want to fix it. It's kind of crazy too, because it's like, we hear things like, without God, all things are possible. And it's like, and hearing that is so encouraging, because you're like, yeah, it's, it's so true. But we're so quick to fall back into the, to be anxious because we're, we're still not in control. Like, I, I know all things are possible if I just give up control, but I have a really hard time. Yeah. So don't worry about anything. And like I said, not the easiest thing to do. But when we put our trust in God, when we put our faith in God, when we are okay with being in the passenger seat with God, you're going to be able to take a breath, take a breath of air, right? It's a daily thing. We can't, we can't just hear this verse once, you know? It's like we have to hear it over and over. It's like we always have to be like brought in back. Okay, come back to me. Like, what are you worried about? Not only don't be worried, but in everything by prayer and supplication when we're worried what do we do it says right here we pray about it instead of worrying pray about it why because God's in control and he already knows our situation right he wants us to he wants us to involve him and by praying we're kind of giving him permission to be involved he already knows everything he knows you know the hair on her head the number of hair on her head you know, he knows that he's allowing us to be in this spot. He wants us to say, yeah, God, I give you permission to be, to be involved. Everything in prayer, supplication is another form of prayer. You're expressing your needs. See, the Old Testament way of expressing yourself was I bring my, my offering to the altar. Right? So I mentioned Leviticus chapter 3, Leviticus chapter 7. God, thank you. Like, you've, I've, I've realized you've blessed me. This is what I'm going to do for you. I've expressed myself. We don't do that anymore. So one of the ways we express ourselves is through prayer and supplication, which, which is a form of prayer. And it's basically asking God for things I need. And we may get those things. And God knows what we really need and what we really don't need. And some of the things we think we need God doesn't allow or give us because he knows it's going to trip us up, you know, or he knows we're not ready for it yet. But it doesn't mean we quit praying, right? We ask, we seek, we knock. We're like the widow and the judge. I want justice. And he, and she nags, nags. And the judge is like, all right, all right. Like just to, you know, God, you, well, you can't pull that one on God, but it's just, it just means don't give up. With thanksgiving, thanksgiving is, an also, is also a form of prayer. And like I mentioned earlier, thanksgiving is more than gratitude. It's an attitude. It's a perspective. We have to have the right perspective when it comes to worrying and asking God and praying to God. Prayer is a Prayer is not one-sided. Prayer is not a monologue, right? Because we know that there's actually a deity, you know, up, s sitting up there in heaven, you know, listening to us. We actually know that someone is listening and caring and loving us. Prayer is a dialogue. Prayer is, hey, this is my problem, and then, okay, I want to hear from you. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get in the word. I'm going to look for the answer. You've, you've given us this book. You've given us your word. And I know that with anything in life, you've, you've given us advice or instruction about it in your Bible. Whether it plainly spells it out or whether it is in poetry or whether it is uh, a biblical character and their, what they went through and their example. 
We pray, we go to the word of God. Let your requests be made known to God. If we worry and we don't pray, like, <laughs> we're going to hold on to that. Like, it, it's not... It's not saying that if you pray, you're never going to worry again. It's saying, like, for this moment in time, like, I'm going to do the thing God wants me to do. This is my problem. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to put it in God's hands. And I'm going to trust him to see it through. Whether I go through a hard time, you know, whether he takes something away from me, whether it be a health issue, whether I lost my job or I'm moving to a new job, I'm dealing with a person, I'm dealing with a family member, you know, I'm dealing with a believer, I'm dealing with a non-believer. We don't, we don't want to go, we don't want to go in blind. We want to go in with prayer. We want to pray up. There's someone that has spoken in our men's group before and he's always saying you need to go in prayed up we go into a situation where God's vessel where God's instrument and and it's like going in doing his work without praying is like you know like a bodybuilder that goes to like pull on the heaviest weights or squat the heaviest weights and he hasn't been training for like the last year Right? It's like we, we want God's power. We need to pray. We need to ask Him for that power. When, when we're thankful with God, we, we begin to get the right view. When I'm thankful for what I have, those little tiny problems, they, they seem to disappear. You know, when I get the right view of life. And and this section, and, and we're going to go all the way to like verse 8. And it's like getting the right view. And and we have a view. We have a world view. The way you think is the way we live. The way we think is the way we live. It's like, how, how are we thinking? Like, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I go to church. I want to serve God. I'm in a ministry. Or this is my ministry now. It's either at church or over here. I'm married or I'm going to be married. Like that's going to be my ministry. I have kids. That's my ministry. I'm in ministry at work. Like who gave you the job? Like God gave you the job, right? Like we need to be thankful for a lot of things. And we forget sometimes. And that's why it's like we're over here. Oh, life sucks, you know, the car this, the job that, you know, for first world problems, <laughs> you know, and it's like, er, like, but what did God do for us? You know, like, God, I'm thankful. Like, ultimately, you've saved me. Like, did I know I need saving? I, I. We, we could have realized that we did or, or we didn't need saving, but God got us saved, right? Do we ever look back? And, and, and part of this word Thanksgiving here is like, is looking back, right? Do you ever look back? Like the past is in the past, right? And that's in one of the epistles. He's like, don't dwell on the past. Like, don't let that hold you down or hold you back. You've made mistakes, right? Move, move forward. But he's like, look back, like, where were you, like, before Christ was in your life? Like, do you ever look back? I've looked back, and I'm like, wow, like, thank you. Like, without you, I could have been, like, completely, like, flown off the handle, like, in jail. Like, I've done some things, but thank God I haven't done other things, right? Was, was that us, or was that God? Like, God has saved me, God has kept me from things. You know, like I was just in a car wreck on the freeway like a couple months ago. And it was like, the guy didn't have insurance. My truck was in the shop for two weeks. 
And it was like, it cost me an arm and a leg, and it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, you know, but thank God, like, no one was hurt. You know, thank God my, my messed up airbag didn't go off that they still haven't fixed. And it's like, every time I drive, all right, God, like, don't let the airbag go off. You know? It's like, I don't want to die today. <laughs> It could have been worse. I've been at red lights and my light has turned green and I've hesitated. And here comes a car coming through. Wow. Thank you, God. Like, did you cause me to hesitate? Like, you know what? I believe so. You know, I would have been hit. You know, through, just, and those are just little minuscule things. And it's like, what about people that get healed? What about people that have to go through surgery? What about people that have long-term problems? It's like, it, it could be worse, you know? Yeah, yeah, we're thankful. Like, someone holds the door open for me. Hey, thanks, you know? Or someone bought me a soda, thanks. You know, those are just, those are nice. But it's like... I want to have thanksgiving, I want to be thankful, and who do I want to be thankful to? God. <coughs> and if I'm thankful with God, you know, those those nice little thank you polite things, though, those are going to start happening like by themselves. Let your request be made known to God. And look what happens, look what the result is, right? He's like, don't worry, pray about it. You know, do you need things? Pray about it. Be thankful. Be thankful in your prayer. And we have a model prayer, the Lord's Prayer. And it's like, he's declaring God. And he's like, he's thankful. And he knows what he's, he knows what he's done, you know? And it's like, if you, if you study the Lord's Prayer, it's like, his needs are like, at the, the needy part is like at the end. Study that so awesome so look at the result what's the byproduct of prayer not worrying and praying and the peace of God peace of God which surpasses all understanding so whose peace God's peace surpasses all understanding this peace is like at the tippy top of the totem pole like you can't get any more peaceful than God's peace surpasses all understanding have you ever seen someone that is like you know that's been like suffering long term have you ever like seen a christian that's been like it's like wow like i like they've you know they've said what they've been going through you know and they've asked for prayer and and we know this person we know this believer and it's just like we know they're hurting and suffering and then here they are at church and they're joyous and they're happy and they're not about themselves and they're praying for other people and they're looking out for other people it's like what's up with that like you're like you're potentially like uh, you're dying <laughs> it's not funny but it's like wow and it's like how how can you be like that you know how can how can you suffer like that and and not show it or or you go to see someone in the hospital and it's like, like, how are you okay with this? Like those people that are just like, how are you okay in this situation? They have the peace of God. It's not, it's not the worldly thing. It surpasses understanding. It's, it's God's. It'll guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It's like worrying not being thankful it'll like affect you right it'll it'll affect your thinking it, it it'll affect your motives right it it's kind of like when the bible says be angry and do not sin it's like we can be angry but don't don't sin don't put don't put action to that anger like there's just and righteous anger and it's like okay like we want justice for that, or that's screwed up, or like, you know, lock that guy up. But we, we can't go out and, you know, in wrath and clamor, we can't go beat him up. 
He's saying instead of worrying, you want peace. How do we get it? We pray. This peace doesn't bring perfection. This peace could be like, for the moment, the, the more we're in prayer, the more of God's peace. The more we're in prayer, the less we're going to worry. And the less peaceful, and the more peaceful our life's going to be. This doesn't mean that, like, I'm not going to have bad times. This, this doesn't mean that, like, life's going to be perfect after this. This means that, like, God's going to comfort me. And then what's going to happen? It's like, the next thing. What's next? What's next for me in my walk? And God is like, okay, are you going to reach out to me? All right, I'm going to pray. I'm going to reach out to you. We're going to get through it. I'm going to have peace. You know, it's this, this bad thing is not going to affect my heart, not going to affect my thinking, you know, and then we move on because God's trying to make us spiritually mature and he does that by the word, right? We studied that two weeks ago. All scripture is inspired by God, you know, and, and the way we live, we live by the word and, and God's making us more spiritually mature with experience and he's like, are you gonna, are you gonna trust me? All right, are you gonna trust me? You know, he, he won't put us through something we can't handle. You know, do you ever notice that? Like, it's not this, this, this like, this, this Christian, he's, they've been a Christian for many, many years and they're like very spiritually mature. And it's like, dang, how are they going through that? Like, I couldn't go through that. And it's just like, hey, are you gonna trust me? Are you gonna trust me? Are you gonna trust me? The peace of God. We want the peace of God. And like I said, it's not going to be... My life's not going to be perfect. But but this is what... This is how we replace the worriness. With prayer, being thankful. So we've talked... About being thankful with God. We know what God has... We know what God has done, right? You want to know what God has done for you? Read the Bible. You know... Read the Bible. You're saved. You're adopted. You've been redeemed. The debt has been paid. Right? Read the Bible. What about other people? Should we be thankful for other people? Well, yes. What about when other people aren't thankful with us? So let's look at those two things. And, and yes, we want to be polite and we, we want to thank people, right? And there, there's just this, um, I don't know, like common sense or there's just this like etiquette, you know, like, hey, you've held the door open for me. Thank you. You know, you've brought me a gift. Thank you. It's my birthday. I'm going to get a card in the mail. Thank you. Or I've gotten a present, you know, thank you. There's just, there's just like, there's this human like thankfulness, right? But what if we do something for someone and they, and they don't thank us, you know, whether they do it on purpose or whether, Hey, we're, you know, we're just busy. Like we got a hundred things to do. You know, we have to go to work. We have all kinds of things to do. Sometimes we forget, you know. And and we do this sometimes uh, mainly with people that we know really good. You know what I mean? We tend to act like a little nicer and better to like people we don't know. And then just the day-to-day -day people, we love them. We like them, you know. But just sometimes we're not going to get... You know, I, I remember, you know, a few years ago serving in ministry and it was like, I was in this ministry, I was serving, you know, um, I remember there was a trip coming up and, and I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm going to, um, I have this benefit from work coming and like, I'm going to, I'm like, God, I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to give that for that trip. So it's like, you know, um, I gave the money to the Lord and, and like for the la the next three weeks, I was just, I was so upset, 
And it was like, at the time, I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand. It was like, where's, where's the parade for Chris? You know, where's the thank you card? Like, where's all the God bless you? Like, where's all the, you know? And then you read about the Pharisees, and it's like, that's what the Pharisees are all about. You know, they stand out there. The attention is all about them. They say these big, grand prayers. They wear these big, grand robes. They do their giving that everybody can see. You know, they just want all this, like, attention. And it was like, Chris, and I was so mad. I was so bitter. And it affected me serving in ministry because I had the wrong perspective. I had, I ha I had the wrong thinking. And it's like... Who was I doing this for? Like self-praise or was I doing this for God? You know, and, and the people on the other end, like, like they knew, like, this is for God. We're going to use this for God. Okay, let's keep doing ministry. Like, we can't, you know, we can't stop and, like, mail a thank you card for everybody that gives. Like, that would be a full-time position, like, doing that, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's look at some a passage in Luke, chapter 17. <clears throat> See, I didn't, I had the wrong thinking. It was all about me. And I was like, yeah, I was serving God, but it was like, you know, you need to have you need to have the, the right perspective. And it's like, we go to the scripture and it's like, okay, put, get your, get your needle like back on, get your compass back on pointing north. In Luke chapter 17, uh, Jesus is speaking to his apostles and he start, and we're going to be in verse seven, but he starts it out with people are going to offend you. <laughs> He kind of gives a guarantee. He promises you, like, people are going to offend you. You're going to get offended, right? And he's, and he's talking about serious things. And he's like, woe to those people. You know, like, this is a serious thing. And he talks about forgiveness. I don't want to take this passage out of context. He talks about forgiveness. And he's like, if someone sins at you seven times and they're repentive, you need to forgive them seven times. And then the apostles are like, teach us how to do this. Show us how to do this. They're saying like, how can we do this? Like, increase my faith. Like, te like I want to do this. And then he's like, if you have faith as a mustard seed, in other words, like, it just takes a little bit of like, faith to do these things. In other words, he was telling them like, start doing them. Like, you know enough already to just start doing them. Anyway, verse 7. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him, when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? Right? So we have a servant. We have a master. He's like, is there going to be any master that says after the servant has come in, they've done their work. Is is there going to be any of them that are going to say, "Hey, come come down and sit here and and have some have some food"? But will he not rather say to him, "Prepare something for my supper, and gird yourself and serve me till I've eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink"? Now you have to you have to think back. To like the old days, right? The old old biblical times, when when the word servant or the word slave didn't mean like that bad thing, like it means today. And and people needed jobs and people needed money, and if you didn't own land and you weren't like producing crops, it was kind of like, what were you gonna do, right? You need to work for someone that has land, or. You know, I need to pay off this debt. I'm going to have to go work for somebody. And you would have to put yourself underneath somebody, you know, for, for a job. You would have to become a servant. 
What master is gonna say like, hey, like you're done with work? Like, hey, come, hey, come sit down. Like, let me get you dinner. Are you like, okay, are you comfortable? Like, you know, let me serve you. No, it's the other way around, right? The servant is serving the master. He's not gonna say that. He's gonna say, prepare something for my supper. Get ready, gird yourself, like put your work clothes on. And after like you fed me, then you could feed yourself. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all the things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to you. Now, how do we apply this? Because, like, I don't have a master in terms of I work for a guy that owns land and I'm his servant. So how do we apply this? We know in the other parts of the Bible, our relationship with, with God is kind of like, it kind of has a title. And, and the way we relate with God, there's this word called bond servant <laughs> or servant. And if you like study that in the Greek, that word servant, it's like, make, it's basically saying slave, right? And it's like, no one wants to be anybody's slave, right? I have freedom, right? <laughs> I don't want to be someone's slave. Well, a Christian is essentially God's servant. A Christian is God's bond servant. And, and I've, I've been talking about perspective. And this verse kind of puts us into perspective. I do things, I serve God because it's my duty. <laughs> I do things and I serve God because that's what he says to do. I do things for God and I serve him because it's the right thing to do. Whether I get a thank you or not, and, and back to my story, like I served God and I got upset because I didn't, I didn't get a thank you from man. And remember, God, man is not the one who saved me. Man doesn't save us, God saves us, right? And sometimes we get so upset you know, I've done this thing, or I've served, or I've done this thing at work, or I've done this thing at school, or I've done this thing for a family member, right? And I didn't get a thank you. And it's like, are you going to be okay with that? <laughs> and, it, and it's like, you, you don't respect me? Like, you don't appreciate me? And it was like, and, and look back who we're, who we're thanking, you know, like... We're thanking God. God has done everything for me. God has given me a job. God has, you know, allowed me to go to school. Like, God has put me in this ministry. And, and I serve under people, and God has put people in position of leadership, and they're overseer, overseers. They're responsible for, for that ministry, right? And, and yes, I serve under people, and I serve under the direction of people. And we, we want to respect them. Right, and we want to give them honor, and 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 they're human, and they're gonna make mistakes. But as a Christian, like, don't get upset. You know, if you don't get a card in the mail, you know, and and we try our best as as believers. Hey, thank you, or God bless you, or how or how are you doing today? You know, but but we all know that um, we're busy. <laughs> And, and sometimes um, that doesn't happen. And, and what happened with me was I got bent out of shape. I became bitter and it, and, it, and it affected my ability to serve with those people, right? And I had to have the right thinking, the right perspective. I had to know that my thanksgiving is towards God first, you know? And, and then I can be polite, you know, and show gratitude to people. And that goes for, you know, a believer or a non-believer, right? We're in the world, we're not of the world. <laughs> it's like, God, get us out of here. <laughs> no, 
No, but we have, we're here, we're his witnesses, we're living here. And this applies for both. Remember two weeks ago, we were studying a passage in 2 Timothy and we're talk, we were talking about the word of God, right? Like, don't, don't be surprised about the people of the world, the, not, the non-believers. There was a whole list in chapter 3. And he's like, in the last days, this is what's going to happen. And it's like, people are going to be unholy. They're going to be, the children are going to be disobedient. The list goes on and on. Like, people are going to be unthankful. People are not going to be respectful. Like, people are going to love the darkness. They're going to hate the light. The list goes on and on, right? They're not... What we, what we see as normal and what we see as everyday, you know, Christian stuff, the world is like completely off, opposite. Don't get upset at non-believers when they don't, when they don't uphold God's word, when they don't align their life to God's word. Like, he, he tells us, like, these people are going to be unthankful. These people are going to disobey these, their parents. They're going to have, like, no respect for the law, you know, and the list goes on and on. It's all about who am I thinking and coming back to that. Who do I work for? Who do I serve? I serve God. God has put me here. God has put me in my ministry. God has put you in your ministry. God has put you in, in, at your place of work. You know, you applied to 10 different places. You know, who do you think arranged it, you know, for you to get your job? You had to go out there, right? You had to make the phone calls. You had to do the footwork. Who do you think God... Who, yeah, that's the answer, God. Who do you think has put you where you are, right? We all know that. Let's continue back in chapter 4 in verse 8 of Philippians. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, noble whatever things are just... Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praiseworthy, anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So we don't want to worry. So what do we do? We pray. We're thankful. We're thankful in our prayer. We want the peace of God. And how, how do we think? You know, we think on these things. Meditate on these things. Think on these things. What are you putting in your mind? <laughs> what are you watching? What are you listening to? You know, how we think is, is, is going to ultimately, you know, pan out into how we live. If I listen to music that you know, is about certain things. I don't, I don't know. I, I had my door open the other day and there was someone listening to music down the sidewalk and it was just every other word was just bleep this, bleep that, bleep that. And it's like, that's how you're going to think. That's, that's how you're, those things are going to show in your life. Think on these things. Think on the true things. Think on the noble things on the things that are just, the things that are lovely, the things that are of good report. Yeah, there's going to be bad things, there's going to be bad news, <coughs> things are going to happen, there's going to be shootings, there's going to be natural disasters. We can't escape things, but it's like, where, where's our focus going to be? Like on the good things or on the worldly things? Don't let, don't let how other people respond to you or react to you, you know, polite or impolite, affect how you serve God. You know, again, easier said than done, right? We get so upset. We get, you know, and I, I do this too. We get so like upset. We get so, we hold grudges. You know, why do we do that? 
because you've offended me, you've broken a promise, you've lied to me, right? You've talked behind my back. You know, you've spread rumors about me. You've gossiped about me. And the, and, the, and the scripture teaches all against those things, right? But I'm still a sinner. I'm still in my fleshly body. I'm trying to fight those things. I'm trying to push those things back. And, and what does he say in the beginning of, of Luke 17? He's saying, I guarantee people are going to offend you, right? And sometimes you're going to offend people. And, and we let go of those things by forgiveness. The, the consequence is always going to be there. I can't forget about what other people have done to me. That's always going to be there. He's saying forgive. And the biblical forgiveness is you don't bring it up again. <laughs> right? You, you know the term? I buried the hatchet. Did you f for real bury the hatchet? Nah, I, I left the handle sticking up. You know, I'm going to grab that sucker when it, you know, when we get in the next fight. No, we, you bury the hatchet completely. The thought, the memories are going to be there. I've forgiven you. I'm never going to bring it up again. That's hard. I'm serving God, right? I serve the master. I serve Jesus. I work for him. And, and... And an earthly master is like, you know, make food for me, you know. But we know with Jesus, he's going to watch out for us. You know, he's going to take care of us, but we still want to serve him. We want to see it the correct way. We want to be thankful. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much. And we just, we can't say that enough. And, and we want to have that attitude the whole year round, we just, and, and yes, we want to have it during the holidays, and we want to know where things come from, you know, we want to know where our blessings come from, we want to know that you're taking care of us, but, and, and that's why we want to be in your, in your word, like every day, it's something, every day, every day I need to forgive somebody, or, you know, um, I need to ask for forgiveness for my sins. I need to repent. It's always something. And I, I'm reminded to do that by sitting down and getting in your word. You know, if I'm angry, I need to take it to you. I can't take it out on the other person. You know, that's sin. We ask that you watch over us, be with us this holiday season, Lord. Um, help us to deal with people. Help us to love on people because that's what you've called us to do. And um, continue to bless our lives and give us, the, give us the things that you want us to have, Father God. And don't give us the things that we think we need, but we know, you know, it's going to get us in trouble. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.